Hello everyone, it's Duckfairy07. Today I'm playing this Mardu Energy build, doing extremely good with this one. Uh, all in all, across a lot of leagues played, I have above 18% win rate with this build and just got a trophy uh, with it. Uh, this deck feels amazing. There is always one deck uh, that I really want to be on a pro level with it, uh, know all its uh, uh, edges, know all the possible plays, uh, tweak the list uh, to perfection to my liking, uh, tweak it perfectly for the current meta game. And this is, uh, this is my uh, choice for the creator showdown tournament okay splashing black for these five cards these cards uh, are amazing in this deck and orcish bowmaster really really make it a lot better uh having a much much better uh, uh mirror and uh, necro matchup and one ring matchups it really really it is a relevant card on the uh, in the main uh, to splash a uh, black four so uh, previously i had a gaunt imagination sin which uh, worked great against specifically necrodomains decks uh, it made more burn power plus saurian plus uh, gaunt imaginations plus bolt uh, and uh, flage and orcish bowmasters uh, all these cards uh, made that version much uh, more explosive and uh, helped me get some surprise wins and finish uh, the necro dominance decks when they pay too much life uh, stuff like that so but uh, after more testing this is my fir version i decided for for open meta game when you ex when do you expect to play a lot of mid-range uh, games and having extra uh, one drops to be uh, as aggressive as possible three ragavans three ocelot pride i think uh, both of these cards have their uh, matchups when their one is better and sometimes the second is better ragavan is better when you're trying to be uh, aggressive and uh, getting the mana is very relevant ocelot pride is a better top deck in the mid game and late game so uh, one static prison one uh Cetonian nightmare uh, and two more static prisons uh, I have on the sideboard. This card can be sometimes hard to support uh, in the main more than two and I had spot only for one here. I really preferred having uh, three bolts in this build with multiple one drops trying to be uh, really aggressive. So that is it. Okay, so I spent uh, a lot of time and uh, uh, most time uh, after MH3 uh, on this deck and to try to make it uh, perfect, try to find all the relevant um, sideboard decisions for small sideboard decisions for some uh, most uh, common matchups and we'll be making a sideboard guide for this deck uh, in the next week or two and uh, that's it so got the trophy with this build i'm very very happy uh with uh, this 75 i really like the sideboard has been very relevant my sideboard consists of uh, having uh, uh, four graveyard hate pieces uh, unlicensed curse is uh, super good when you're playing uh, mirror against opponent's flage it takes the flage uh, it um uh, it, it becomes a very, very big uh, attacker. Also, a uh, Nihil Spellbomb uh, is a better piece when you're playing, when you just need to remove all your opponent's graveyard, like when you're playing against Storm, against uh, Living End, and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, having a mix of these four graveyard hit pieces, I think that is uh, my most important decision for the sideboard to just have four of these pieces. I think it's very important because Gorios uh boros uh, energy uh and uh, uh attracts uh, gorios and the uh, living end uh all are very relevant uh, matchups uh, right now becoming bigger and bigger also uh so uh flage is getting more and more popular and these cards are just very good uh, when you're playing mirrors okay so uh that is it uh let's now go check out the gameplay and uh, the entire league okay so uh, playing a second in this one uh, opponent starting first playing um, blue red merktide 
So I have Bowmasters uh, to play on turn 2, so I'm hoping they won't be able to uh, get Delirium here. So I go for the Surveil, put the land in the yard, and just to try to go for it, get my basic and see if opponent is lucky enough to get the Surveil. They fetch, play Steam Vents and play Bolt, kill my Bowmaster, looking for... Uh, uh, looking for uh, delirium they didn't get it so now they have tamio uh, they went for preordain trying to find the land probably to flip the tamio here okay so they did it tamio flips puts they put tamio on four and uh, unfortunately can't get rid of it i try to go for the fable but opponent has a force of negation and okay so tamio is now a problem it is on six so I have to do something about it. I go for Flage and uh, deal 3 damage to it. Play the Ragawan here as a blocker and can't attack the Tamiyo. So opponent goes, pluses it, puts it on 5. I can replay the Flage from the yard now. Opponent uh, counters the Raptor. I go for uh, Flage again. Uh, taking uh, this time taking Ragawan uh, going face and unfortunately I can't uh, I can't play uh, the expressive iteration here opponent has another removal here I go for a flage and they have a counter spell so uh, I go for a discharge finally kill this Tamio uh, surveil we both have zero cards uh, right now uh, in the hand Opponent uh, draws into re removal, is able to connect with Ragawan, gets my uh, Ocelot Pride from the top of my library, but that doesn't matter because now uh, I can replay the Flage from the yard and they have zero cards in library, can't counter it, which means uh, if they don't draw immediate, immediate uh, solution, this game is over and uh, yeah, opponent concedes. Let's check out game two. Okay, so for this matchup, I'm bringing in a static uh, prison. I'm bringing in static prison uh, to uh, get rid of the Merc Tide, of course, is, if necessary. Uh, trimming uh, bolts, because I'm adding another removal. Trimming one flage, because uh, they will definitely bring some graveyard hate and trim one uh, ragawan one uh, prize to make uh, room for graveyard hate pieces and here is a turn two unlicensed hearse very good card uh, both in this matchup and uh, the energy matchup okay so i uh start taking the cards from the graveyard pretty good situation here okay so i untap I have hers, I can play guide, play Dragawan, get the energy here. I have my two uh, one drops on the field, uh, again take their stuff from the graveyard. Try to uh, uh, disable them from playing Merc Tides. They have a bunch of cards in the yard. So they go bolt, take the Dragawan. And uh, yeah, they also take the guide of souls. I have a bunch of cards in my hand, so that's totally fine. Okay, I go for uh, basic here and I have a bunch of options but I prefer just uh, putting flage in the yard here, here getting rid of the channeler, taking their uh, instant sorcery so they can play a big uh, merc tide. Okay, opponent goes for hers, unfortunately takes the flage. Uh, okay, they already take the flay, so uh, there's no, there was no point just going for Static Prison. Immediately I decide to go for the Fable this turn. And save Static Prison if needed for something like Merc Tide. And opponent actually finds the Merc Tide, but it's only a 4-4 luckily, because I removed so much cards from the yard with the hearse. Okay, so... Uh, they decide to use hers. Before. 
So I was able to discard the flage, even like play it. And uh, I decided to take uh, take prison, uh, take a hearse with the prison, uh, animate hearse here, attack 4 8, put my opponent 2 5, and uh, pass the turn. Yeah, so now pretty good, uh, pretty good situation for me here. Uh, I paid the mana for the prison, I flipped the Kikijiki. And also have the Bowmasters, I can go for a Flage Recast from the Yard. Opponent, yeah, opponent here. Plays the Subtlety, this means they can jump. They can jump for a turn, but I go with both. Uh, getting a Treasure means here I can Recast the Flage. And uh, yeah, opponent realizes that uh, and concedes, so that is the match. Okay, let's check out uh, match two. Okay, one lander here, but I'm playing second and I have a survey land. I decide to risk a bit here and uh, keep this one. Okay, so I surveil Ajani to the graveyard, uh, definitely hoping to get the land here. Uh, and I do uh, find that land I was looking for, so now I decide to pass a turn and uh, hold mana to play the Bowmasters uh, on their turn. Opponent also passes. So I decide to go for the Bowmasters on their turn, uh, it resolves. Okay, did not get uh, the third land I was hoping for, but I was able to uh, start attacking uh, with the Bowmaster. And now I can play the Guide of Souls and the Ragawan or Hold for Removal, whatever. Opponent uses the counter spell, but I have a Ragawan which is a good threat against uh, their deck so they can counter both of my one drops and they're both like really powerful but here opponent uh, plays the Vrenna 6 uh, pings uh, the Ragavan uh, but it's okay I can still uh, attack into the Vren here go for the Ajani put another effective uh, creature here which uh, basically they have to use two cards to get rid of it Okay, they again ping the uh, Bowmaster with uh, Vren, but uh, still it's good situation for me. Again, I'm able to just attack into the Vren and I also get the third land, uh, Fable. And my opponent uh, now passes, uh, plays Merktide and Fable of uh, Mirror Breaker, but I have everything I need here. I go for a Static Prison, take Merktide, uh, kill uh, the Fable, attack with everything. And I also have Flage in the yard and another Flage from a Raptor putting my opponent down on 3 and they concede so that is a quick win there. They're playing some kind of uh, teamer midrange. Okay, let's see my sideboarding plan uh, against them. Okay, so we can see here uh, I... Uh, I removed uh, some of my one drops because my, my opponent is playing Vrenna 6 and they can just easily ping them and with Dragavan I can always just save them in hand and dash them. I expected some graveyard hate so often just trimming one flage post board and uh, yeah I don't need bolt much there's just nothing I can really uh, bolt. And uh, I go for a Blood Moon, a Resolve Blood Moon here my opponent is a teamer deck. So it's not the easiest for them to like uh, get all the mana and they're also just stuck on lands so I put a Giganta hand and they actually find the basic here island go for iteration digging for more lands probably and uh, here I was able to play Giganta a Giganta great threat hitting for five here and uh, they find a fable and uh, I was able to get the discharge and get another white mana to cast a flage from the yard and flage then makes things uh, very easily easy wins game in a turn and uh, yeah opponent also basically plays the blood moon but uh, I played it at a better moment and that was the game 
Okay, so that was a very quick match. Uh, let's check out uh, match three. Hmm. Okay, so uh, playing second, uh, my, my opponent uh, often plays the reanimate, reanimator decks, so they went uh, turn one, surveil Emrakul into the yard, so everything was clear. It wasn't the usual version, and they were stuck on lands, uh, trying to surveil, find the lands, didn't get it. I was able to find a second Ajani on top, and that is the easiest way to flip it, so I just keep it on top. Uh, play a Johnny, which uh, then uh, can start attacking. And yeah, here it is attacking for a three, uh, putting a Johnny, uh, playing another Johnny to flip, the, flip flip him, make another Cat Warrior token, and start doing the Johnny ability. Next turn, I can play uh, Fable and uh, start doing some crazy damage with a Johnny. Okay, opponent still looking for a land but uh, didn't get it and uh, yeah that is uh, that is it they concede okay let's check out game two so i'm not exactly sure what is my opponent by playing but i know it's a reanimator deck so it's super easy to board in all my four all four, all four of my uh, graveyard hate pieces uh i don't really need discharge uh, in this matchup bolt can go face Discharge can't and Static Prison can kill stuff like Underworld Cookbook or something else. So uh, Discharge is the worst option here. Okay, opponent goes for Urza Saga and Suspense Profane Tutor. That is one of the best starts for them. Turn 2 Saga, Suspense Profane Tutor. They resolve on the same turn and that can be really strong. Okay, so... Uh, just uh, taking my luck with uh, Raptor here. I go for a Raptor, finding a Ragawan, and that is good, but it's not uh, good enough. Uh, opponent uh, has uh, both uh, Saga and uh, Profane Tutor resolving next turn, but it's uh, still not over. Even if they do resolve, the Emrakul make me Annihilator 6, it's still not game over. I am then untapping, killing their uh, Construct token. But uh, the problem was they had another Saga. And another Saga was uh, too much there. So sometimes you can win games like this. Uh, you don't uh, give up. Win games like this. And uh, I was able to get a basic here. Uh, take the construct, but I was not able to uh, to beat the second saga, making more constructs. I did not have second. If I had the second white mana here, I would maybe be able to win this one actually. Uh, but like this, uh, yeah, it was impossible. So I needed second white source to play guide plus ocelot prize, start making tokens, and that would enable me to block them very well. But uh, yeah, that was it. Let's check out game three. Okay, so definitely, uh, if you're interested in this deck, stay tuned for uh, on my dictionary profile. As I said, in the next 10 days, they will there will be sideboard guide uh, for this deck. I actually played this uh, badly. Should have played the Ocelot Pride uh, turn 1. Then I try to connect. If I connect, I get a token. If I don't connect, I play Ocelot, I play a Guide of Souls turn 2 and then a second Ocelot Pride, guaranteeing me to, uh, uh, but to get a token on a turn 2. But this was also very good because uh, this ended up, this ended up in me uh, getting, uh, getting two Ocelot Prides uh, connecting and uh, with when you pair this with a Jani and two Ocelot Prides, it really goes brutal. As you can see here, I get double cat token, uh, double a Jani token, and then second Ocelot triggers. Uh, which uh, which remove which uh, then doubles all those tokens and as you can see that is a lot of tokens. So now I'm on 21 and opponent can Gorio the Emrakul, but that just kind of doesn't matter at this point 
there, I just have too much stuff uh, right now, and I can take uh, I can take uh, 15 here easily and just kill them on the swing back. So that is the match. Okay, so let's check out uh, match four. I'm really, really, really happy with the D75. Uh, the the proof of that is me deciding to take this build for a uh, for a creator showdown tournament, and uh, yeah, so I think it is the deck I like the most at the moment, and uh, trying to perfect uh, playing it and get really good with it and it's uh, it's among my favorite uh, strategies always playing aggro deck like this okay so oh, playing a mirror right now uh, i i find a ren of glory here and play a uh, fable of uh, my own in this situation opponent uh, can kill it uh, go for the fable attack and play the Sitonian nightmare so they can get back the guide of souls Play the Ocelot Pride, trigger the guide, uh, I have to take care of this. So discarding Ragawan, I don't really need Ragawan and I find a bunch of removal which is good for me in this situation. Basically clearing their entire field, killing Pride, killing guide, even killing the cat token. Really really nice turn here. Opponent goes uh, Giganta Hand. And yeah, okay so... I have Sitonia Nightmare, I kind of want uh, for Bowmaster to die, so I can get it back. And uh, I get the Ragavan back to my hand and uh, on the field and put the Giganta to hand. 7 uh, energy at the moment, so I can use Nightmare to bring back uh, whatever. Giganta uh, could be uh, very uh, important in this match, so uh, I go for Giganta uh, with haste and attack with two of my creatures with two power and i decided i will prioritize killing giganta i thought like giganta is more important than kiki jiki right now they have Sitonia nightmare in hand and have to top deck a creature to um they have to top deck a creature to uh, do something with it so my opponent plays Obnixilis, puts two Devil Tokens on the field. But yeah, Devil Tokens just uh, wasn't enough to get them out there. And I had a kill with the Flage and Sitonia Nightmare. Anyway, so the Obnixilis uh, didn't do much here. Opponent concedes. Let's check out uh, game two. Okay, so had to definitely mulligan this one, and this was interesting hand, interesting, interesting game, and interesting uh, mulligan decisions. I decided to keep a hate. I think keeping hate in this matchup post board is better than keeping uh, actual threats. Sun Cleanser is just super super powerful card uh, in this matchup. Uh, it's a one four. It blocks everything, and uh, it uh, just makes. All the stuff from the energy player much much worse okay so i decide to let the cat through my opponent also has the sun cleanser but as you can see here i have a combo of a bow master plus a lightning bolt to kill the sun cleanser i still also have another bolt in my hand so i can always try to attack into it and uh, yeah here it is they have another one same as me I timed my, uh, I was timing my second Sun Cleanser. I was f trying to find perfect situation to play the second one and I was able to do it. So here I attack with a Cat Warrior token. I tap out to play the Fable and my opponent uh, goes for the Bowmaster, kills my Bowmaster, then uh, finds a Static Prison to take the Sun Cleanser. Okay. I uh, use uh, one Bowmaster ability, so they get the counter, it didn't really matter. I go for uh, attack here with Cat with the Goblin Shaman token, 
I have a bunch of good stuff here. I go for the Sun Cleanser. It removes all their energy, which means uh, their Static Prison will die and I will get my second Sun Cleanser back. Basically completely locking them off from uh, all options. Yeah. Second Sun Cleanser was very good here. And uh, my opponent uh, goes for a Raptor. Didn't find uh, anything relevant, so... Uh, they can play anything with Raptor because they can get uh, energy. I block the cat token and bolt the Ajani and start uh, taking cards with the hearse here. So I have total control right now. Uh, I even um, can play a second uh, Ajani to flip it and yeah, that really seals the deal. I can just uh, start doing uh, crazy things. Uh, with this Ajani uh, killing their Sun Cleanser and opponent uh, concedes that is the match. Okay, so let's check out the last match of this league for the trophy. And the entire league was 2-0 wins except for uh, match 3 which was 2-1. So lost only a single game entire league and this deck really really feels uh, perfect. Okay, so opponent starts with uh, Urza Saga. So playing against, uh, probably guessing it's uh, Nadu. These days if they start with the Saga it's usually Nadu and yeah here they go for the Rumble. And it I ended up uh, correctly, uh, guessing correctly it was Nadu but with uh, Malevolent Rumble. Uh, on the 2 mana slot probably uh, instead of Wall I'm guessing so. Okay so. I have uh, multiple options here. I have multiple options here. Uh, I go for the uh, Raptor and now I have uh, extra mana to hold for the Discharge. Opponent uh, tries to use the Shuko, but I kill the Nadu in response. And this is just what you have to do. Try to be really aggressive and hold the removal. Uh, and uh, that is uh, that is very good way to beat uh, uh, Nadu and I think this deck can uh, very much deal with uh, Nadu and uh, if you adjust your main board and the sideboard I don't even have harsh mentors at this point for Nadu I feel like a matchup is totally fine in this version uh, Bowmaster is also decent against them uh, killing the spring hearts and then two coves, especially if you're playing first it can end up really well and uh, this build has uh, six one drop sorry ten one drops and a lot of instant speed removal uh, which can help of course they will get triggers when you kill the nadu but you just have to make a good clock to uh, Win, of course, Nadu is a brutal deck, but there are ways to fight it. Even with uh, Nadu, um, with, even with Nadu legal, uh, this deck is, uh, I think, good option. Okay, so here it is, a quick win for uh, in game one. Let's check out game two and the sideboard against uh, Nadu. So trimming one bolt, trimming one Ragawan, trimming one Flage. Uh, in this matchup, just to bring in some uh, relevant cards from the sideboard, I think uh, Blood Moon is a great option. And as you will see here, opponent didn't want to block with Eldrazi Spawn token and that costed them the match uh, very soon. So I was able to connect with uh, Ragawan on turn 2, find my basic and this deck, really it's 3 color deck but it uses the Blood Moon uh, as it's a two color deck, your only spell you can play post board is uh, Bowmaster. And uh, you can even play that uh, with uh, Ragawan, with Fable, with uh, Giganta, a lot of ways to play under the moon for this deck. And I try to kill the Scion to connect with Ragawan. Opponent has uh, Dismember in response. And I'm able to go uh, Ocelot plus put Giganta to hand. Next turn, Giganta can start attacking. And this is. Uh, I can play Giganta and then Giganta can produce mana and that is perfect situation for me. And opponent plays for another turn and that is uh, the win. In the match, far, match uh, last match in the trophy match, uh, got there very very easily. 
Uh, I didn't even, as I said, I didn't even include the harsh mentors for the Nadu matchup. I don't think it's necessary. Deg is playing good against it, and Blood Moon it can also be a sweet option there uh, often. And uh, I like uh, in this uh, in this my version of the energy deck for the open meta when you expect to play bunch of mid-range matchups i like having three ocelots three ragawans both have the matchups when they're good when one is slightly better than the second and uh, having both feels great often and uh, yeah i like to toy with uh, in post board games between having uh ragawan in or the ocelot pride in it can be very relevant and that's it so stay tuned for the cyborg guide for this deck uh, next week or in the next 10 days i will surely make it it will be on my dictionary profile i think this is one of the top three four decks in the format uh, and uh, you i i uh, i would uh, i'm investing myself in this deck i don't currently have a paper modern deck uh, uh, missing a lot of uh, missing bowmasters and a lot of mh3 cards but decided to go for it uh, this is Amardu is one of my favorites uh, and I'm definitely will try to invest in paper collection of build all the possible uh, Mardu decks. I really enjoy uh, playing them. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, great option to invest in modern in my opinion right now and uh, uh, and one of my favorite archetypes in this MH3 modern definitely a strong option and uh, good invest okay so that's it for today for the end friendly reminder to click like click subscribe comment in the video uh, tell me uh, your what do you think about this version of mardu in comparison to some previous ones from my channel uh, did are you playing uh, energy uh, how we're doing with it and uh, what do you prefer in the flex let's say flex slots Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.